ओके सो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन टुडे इज लेक्चर इज ऑन अप्रोच टू एडल्ट इन पीडियट्रिक एल्बो एक्सरेज सो आई एम डॉक्टर आयुष अग्रवाल सो आई स्टार्ट वे सो वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट द एक्सरेज एल्बो एक्सरेज इन चिल्ड्रन द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज टू नो अबाउट द ऑसिफिकेशन सेंटर्स सो दीज आर द ऑसिफिकेशन सेंटर्स द common way of remembering them is uh, using this crito c r i t o e so c stands for capitulum r for radial head i for internal the medial epicondyle we use the word internal so i is for that t is for trochlea o is for olecranon process and lateral epicondyle is external epicondyle so instead of lateral we call it external epicondyle in this acronym so these are the different ossification centers and on a lateral view we can see this is the capitulum okay olecranon radial head these three are very well visible now so on an x ray uh, this would be the capitulum okay and this is their order of appearance this is the radial head this is the internal epicondyle this is the one this is the trochlea this is the olecranon and this one is a lateral epicondyle okay so this order or this crito c r i t c r i t o e t o e is to that way you can remember this order is very important okay and i'll tell you why later then uh, one another important uh, thing in anatomy that we need to know is the fat pads around the elbow now remember uh, the anterior fat pad is normally visible but if it is displaced then it becomes abnormal okay the posterior fat pad is normally not visible it is obscured by the posterior humeral cortex and the posterior fat pad becomes visible that is abnormal okay so displays anterior fat pad and a uh, visible posterior fat pad are abnormal they signify that uh, there is some joint diffusion or hemarthrosis uh, so obviously in cases of injuries uh, we will think about hemarthrosis and it signifies a significant injury okay so this is if you can see clearly this is the anterior fat pad which is elevated and this one is the posterior fat pad which is also very well visible okay now uh, we need to understand the mechanism of injury i think um, just in, rather than reading this i'll just show you this figure see this is the normal elbow so this is the narrow part of the distal humeral or the supracondylar region of the humerus okay it is narrow as we can see this is the posterior fat pad this is the anterior fat pad okay this is the synovium this is the cartilaginous part of the olecranon okay this is the radius this is ulna okay so what happens is basically if there is hyperextension basically there is a uh, the ulna it just impinges into the this narrow part of the humerus and this leads to a supracondylar fracture of humerus and what you will realize is mostly what happens is this parts get stuck and this part becomes displaced anteriorly so what happens is most of the cases you will have a supracondylar fracture of humerus with posterior displacement and because there is a fracture there will be a lot of blood that will collect into the synovial cavity and that will lead to the elevation of anterior as well as posterior fat pad now you should just read it up the injury to the elbow joint uh, results in hyperextension or extreme valgus due to a fall on outstretched hand the hyperextension leads to a supracondylar fracture so that is the mechanism you can just visualize it it's not very difficult to understand then moving on uh, what happens is uh, if there is extreme valgus see the first thing that i talked about was there is extreme hyperextension that leads to a fracture of supracondylar humerus if there is extreme valgus what happens so what will happen is uh, this is say uh, this is a humerus radius and ulna this is a medial epicondyle okay 
the first step would be uh, depending on uh, where the main epicenter of the force is there could be dislocation of the radial head okay that is one possibility other possibility is that instead of dislocation it could there could be a fracture neck of the radius or there could be an associated fracture of the olecranon as well okay then what may happen is there could be if the forces are directed more towards the humerus it could lead to a fracture of the lateral condyle of humerus okay instead of uh, causing any dislocation of radial head or any fracture of radius or ulna if there is extreme valgus in those cases what can happen is that the ultimately there is so much twisting and so much stretching of the lateral aspect of the medial aspect sorry so what happens it leads to the avulsion of medial epicondyle and the medial epicondyle can actually uh, come inside the joint cavity okay it can come just overlying the allah okay so see we know normal elbow already has some valgus cubitus valgus you know already is there what happens is when a child falls on an outstretched hand this can lead to extreme valgus and this could lead to either a dislocation dislocation or fracture of radius there could be associated involvement of a lecranon if the effect are more on humerus then it could lead to fracture of the lateral condyle of humerus and on the medial side because of extreme valgus it can lead to avulsion of the medial epicondyle which can get trapped within the joint i'll discuss this later as well and uh, because there is normal valgus position of normal elbow so it is very uncommon to see any avulsion of uh, lateral epicondyle and that is practically very difficult to have okay so these are the images again it could be radial dislocation of the radius there could be fracture of the radial neck or a lecranon there could be if the mode directed towards the humerus and there could be fracture of the lateral condyle of humerus and there could be avulsion of the medial epicondyle okay now uh, i'll give you a checklist uh, for pediatric as well as adult elbows and uh, mostly the checklist is more or less same the observation centers are the one which need to be taken care of in case of pediatric elbow so the things that we need to look for are basically uh, are the fat pads normal okay the anterior and posterior fat pads that i already discussed secondly is the anterior humeral line normal i'll tell you about this and thirdly the radio capital line is normal and fourthly the ossification centers are normal or not okay fine uh, now i'll discuss a little bit about the sequence i've already told you about crato basically it is a capitulum radial head inter i for internal epicondyle t is for trochlea o for olecranon it could be l or e depending on the way you want to remember it later or extend the epithelial right? okay so there could be some minor variations in the sequence and there was a study in which a lot of cases were studied a lot of normal pediatric elbow x-rays were studied and what they came through was that uh, there could be some minor variations in this order but the uh, what is actually relevant for us clinically is that i always comes before t even alphabetically i comes before t this thing is important that i t i comes before t the reason this is important is sometimes what happens is that uh, the medial epicondyle like i told you what if it avulses and comes into the joint okay so what it happens is that here we don't see any medial epicondyle and this medial epicondyle has actually come in the joint and it is at the level of the tr trochlea now sometimes it may it may masquerade as if it is the trochlea but actually it is a avulsed medial epicondyle so that is the relevance of this thing that we cannot have a trochlea if medial epicondyle is not present that is a message that we want to spread okay so if you see the ossified t before i or trochlea before internal epicondyle then internal epicondyle is almost certainly been avulsed and is lying within the joint that is it is masquerading as a trochlear ossification center i'll give you examples <clears throat> 